What's good, family? It's your man, Daryl the Second. Usually I pray, and I still may because I like to pray, um, but I pray beforehand. Um, I wanted to come out here and give you a message about Proverbs 25, 15. It talks about softness breaking the bones. I'll pray because I know people like to pray. I usually like to pray in secret. I've been praying a lot and openly on here. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word and this opportunity to speak your truth to the people. And I thank you, God, for your um, just your spirit, God, and your presence in my life and for reminding me of what your word says. God, I thank you for the fact you've created the Bible, giving us a guide that we can use to live out our lives and have a relationship with you. I thank you for the power of your word. Um, I thank you for your peace, your strength, and the courage you give me, Lord, to read your word and to preach it. I pray you get the glory out of it all. And I say, have you with Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. I am sleepy, but I want to do this because I've held on to this for, I think, well, this one I think came today. Um, Proverbs 25, verse 15 says, Patience can persuade a prince, and soft speech can break bones. I think that's so powerful. That last part sticks to me because there are instances in my life where I encounter scenarios where people will be used by the enemy to try to bring harm to my life. Um, if you're a believer, you know what I'm talking about. And this happens at the job at times, too, where you can be doing an excellent job because you're working unto the Lord. And just doing that can create conflict with people who you've done nothing to. But because the devil has influence in their lives, he's working through them. And what I've realized is sometimes people will try to bait you into a confrontation, a conflict, a grievous word, stir up anger, is what the Bible says. But a soft answer turns away wrath. And so the enemy will try to use people to get you to outside of character, to ruin your witness and to hurt others, or to just speak in a dysfunctional manner because people who operate in that spirit, a mocking spirit, an argumentative spirit, controlling spirit, they feed off of that type of energy. And what God likes to remind me of is to put cool water on fires because that's humility. Because sometimes our ego wants to respond in the same way we're treated. But I've learned soft speech can break bones. Um, I had worked with someone recently, and I remember praying to God, to help me walk in love around this person because I knew this person didn't like me even though I didn't do anything to them. Walking in love wasn't being a doormat. I would show, I would show kindness, but I go by my business to pay no mind to them otherwise. And I remember today um, something took place and it was a moment of endearment for a second between myself and this person. But it was a reminder from the Lord that you treat people kind regardless of how they treat you. Don't return evil for evil. And soft words break the bones. And what I've learned is when people are treating you bad, trying to get a reaction from you, it's really the enemy working in them. You pray for their soul, but you pray against that spirit. You take authority of that spirit because you have Jesus in you to do that. That spirit in them is bothered by the fact that Jesus lives in you. So walk in the authority God's given you. Um, what I say? Darn it. Because there, yeah, there will come a point if you continue to show kindness to them. It doesn't mean you can't speak up and speak truth. But don't lose your composure and act like they act. Because there will come a point where they have to sit with themselves and really reflect on how you're responding to them and realize that the problem ain't, ain't you, it's them. And that could be God's way of bringing deliverance to them. But you love them. But you, you love them like the Lord. But at the same time, you don't have to be a doormat. And you don't have to yell and go back and forth. Because softness breaks the bones. You can speak truth in soft words. And it hits harder than lashing out, banging somebody over the head with the truth. And so I just say today, walk in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not rejoice when wrongdoing takes place. It doesn't exalt right or wrong. It's it's I'm going off memory. And so I just want you to know when you walk in the love of the Lord, the Bible says if man's ways please God, even his enemies will be at peace with him. So keep trusting God even when you're facing adversity through people. And just know that those people are dealing with demonic stuff in their life. The Bible says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I pray the same thing for you as well. Before I close, if there's anybody who doesn't have a relationship with God the Father, the only way to have one is through his son, Jesus Christ. And this comes through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus died, that he's Lord, and that God the Father raised him back from the dead. If you want him to be Lord of your life, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. And I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Now, if you did that, your name is written in the book of life. And the reason why that's important is because if you don't know Jesus, your name ain't in the book of life. You you go to hell. And he doesn't want that. So he sent his son to die on the cross. His son never sinned, but he took all of the sin of humanity on himself so that we could have a, a, a get out of jail free card. But there is a cost. 
Salvation is a gift and it's free, but the cost of discipleship, people are not liking you because you carry God's spirit on you. That's a part of it. So don't be ashamed of Jesus because he said, if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you before his father and angels in heaven. I pray this word encourage you and I pray you uh, get led by God to a Bible-based church and be baptized in the water because you got to be born again in water and spirit. And uh, let's pray as I start to fall asleep. Lord, thank you for this word and thanks for the opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to get some rest. Y'all take it easy. Good night.